Hi there, do you want to increase your garden privacy? There are three questions people ask. One is, how do I increase my garden privacy from above, from overlooking windows? Two, how can I increase garden privacy without losing light? And three, how can I make a garden privacy screen? It's Alexandra here from the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel and blog and I've been doing a great deal of work on garden privacy because the Middle Sized Garden book, The Complete Guide of Garden Privacy, is out now and available on Amazon. And it goes into much more detail about how to choose a tree for privacy, how to choose hedges, fences, walls for privacy, gazebos, sheds, pergolas, where do they all fit in, and how to also screen eyesores and minimise noise. But I thought it would be nice to answer the three main questions about garden privacy here today. So, what do you do if you want to increase privacy from above? Perhaps you've got windows overlooking your garden, at the end of the garden, at the side of the garden, or even just from houses that are next door to yours. Now, the important thing to know about this is the sight lines. Making a garden private used to be about planting tall evergreen conifers all around your boundary and completely blocking out the neighbours. However, they get very large, they cast a lot of shade and their roots made the ground very dry. And in many places now, this is not even legal. Certainly before you start any privacy strategy, you should find out what's allowed in your area or in your country. And buildings have got much taller these days. As you can see here at Kew Gardens, the tower blocks can still be seen above these incredibly tall old conifers. But when you go round Kew Gardens, there are lots of lovely secret places where you can sit and be completely private. So how can you tell whether these sight lines are effective. The main thing to remember is that if you can see a person in a window, then they can see you. So when you decide where your screen, your hedge, your fence or your tree is positioned, or your pergola, your canopy, your parasol or your pop-up gazebo, you need to be able to not see, to have blocked out what could be a person in the window. But that's the test. If you can't see what would be a person in a window, they can't see you. And that's the only area you have to block out from the place where you want to be private. You can see that the sight line goes from the window down to your sun lounger and the closer it gets to your sun lounger or table, the lower it is. So the closer something is to you, the more privacy you will get without blocking out light. And that's a very important thing to think because if you have a small tree quite close to your table, you'll actually probably get a lot more privacy and more light than having a great big enormous one further away. And now once you're looking at that sight line, you can also see why having something like a parasol or a gazebo or an arbor can interrupt that sight line. So give yourself some overhead protection from those prying eyes. And also it will sometimes be very helpful to have shade from the sun. So the next question, which as you can see is very interrelated, is how do I increase my privacy without losing light? Well, firstly, keep any trees or hedges for privacy only at the height you need them to be. The other important thing is that you can actually prune trees to increase the light by making sure that you prune for a wide open shape. Now this is suitable for things like fruit trees, for example. And with this, it's very important to take off, say, a whole branch right next to another major branch or the trunk, rather than cutting across a branch. When you cut across a branch, you actually stimulate a lot of growth where that cut is. And so the tree will just get thicker and clumpier and actually usually uglier. So it's worth investing in discovering how to prune your trees so that you get maximum light. But of course, the other thing is to think about a screen that is low and near you. And that's where we come to how you make a privacy screen. And there are lots of brilliant ones out there at the moment on the market. You can find laser cut caught in steel, you can find fretwork. But I'd like to look at three ideas that are the simplest and cheapest to do. And the first one, obviously, is just plain garden trellis that you can get from a DIY store. And the one thing that you do need to know about this is that it has to be secured really well. 
If it's against the ground, it needs to be with fence posts that are properly put at least 12 inches into the ground and secured with a concrete called post mix. If you just balance your trellis on the ground, it, as soon as plants grow up it, they'll create a sail effect and really even in a small wind, you will get the whole thing pulled over. If the trellis is on a wall, it needs really stout support. At least one third of the height of the trellis needs to be on the wall and the wall itself needs to be very solid and in good condition. A second easy idea is to have what's called a summer hedge. Now a summer hedge is when you plant taller flowers, things like ornamental grasses, delphiniums, foxgloves, verbena bonariensis, all those beautiful flowers, taller roses, a climbing rose on an obelisk, all sorts of things which will interrupt the sight line that we've been talking about. So your seating area or your sun lounger will be protected by a great mound of tall and beautiful flowers. And this is lovely and easy. It's a very simple screen. And also when you look out of the house at your garden, you'll see this lovely explosion of flowers. So a summer hedge, which obviously most of it will die down in the winter, but you won't be on your sun lounger in the winter probably, is really worth thinking about. And then the third thing is a sort of makeshift screens using whatever you have. I've got two examples here really. One is from Australia where planks and corrugated iron have been put together to make a, a screen. It hides the washing line in fact, but it could also protect people from passerby eyes. Because one of the things to realise about a garden screen is it doesn't have to be solid. It's a distraction. If someone puts their eye right to the screen and wants to see what you're doing, obviously they can, but very few people are ever going to do that. And if you look at a screen when you're walking past or walking past a window, you actually won't see anything really that goes on the other side. The other one is this arched screen from Spain, and this is echoing local architecture. It's just very narrow arches. It's white painted. Once again, you can see through it, but when you're sitting at the terrace, you don't. You just have a sense of privacy. So I hope you found that helpful. The Middle Sized Garden Complete Guide to Garden Privacy is available on Amazon and there's a link in the description below and you can find out much more about choosing trees, hedges, trellises, fences, sheds, pergolas and things to increase your privacy. But I hope you found that helpful. And if you'd like tips, ideas and inspiration for all things garden, not just privacy, then do subscribe to the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.